cellular respiration. Before we begin, it's important to go back and think about the characteristics of life. In this video, we're going to be focusing on two important ones, using energy and the need to grow and develop. First, food is used for growth. And in fact, cells need food in order to grow. Food, it turns out, provides the building materials for organisms to create new cells. Remember, in order to grow or reproduce or heal, an organism needs to create new cells. In fact, for you to grow from a baby to the size you are, your body has had to create trillions and trillions of cells. And remember, each cell comes from another cell. The cells have to grow large enough in order to split into two smaller cells. And food provides the molecules needed for the cell to get larger. So in order for an organism, organism to get larger or heal, it needs food in order to create new cells. Next, food also provides energy. Remember, all living things need energy. All living things are made out of cells and cells need food in order to create energy. So it turns out food is pretty important. It's required to grow, but it's also required to provide energy for everything else that a cell does. So in this video, scientists will be able to comprehend how cells make energy by taking notes on cellular respiration. To begin, what is respiration? Well, respiration is a process that changes huge food molecules, namely sugar, into usable energy. Again, cells can't use molecules for energy. They have to convert it. And this process happens in the mitochondria. Again, cells can't use food directly. They have to convert the energy in food into ATP, and that is the job of the mitochondria. So how does this process work? Well, respiration starts in the mitochondria. The first thing the mitochondria needs is sugar, or really any large food molecule, but sugar is by far the most common. In addition to sugar, a mitochondria needs oxygen. Then inside the mitochondria, the energy from that sugar, the food molecule, is used to create ATP. And remember, that's the energy that cells need. I like to think of ATP as little batteries. And those batteries get charged up by the energy from food. And then those little batteries can go all over the cell to charge up the other organelles to provide the energy that they need. So again, the energy from food goes to charge up the chemical ATP. But there's also some waste produced. The first waste is carbon dioxide. Now you might be thinking to yourself, oxygen and carbon dioxide, that sure seems familiar, and you'd be right. Oxygen is the molecule that we breathe in, and carbon dioxide is the molecule that we breathe out. And there's no mystery as to why that happens. The final thing produced in respiration is water. The breaking of food molecules produces carbon dioxide, energy, and some water. You may also see respiration written out as a formula. I want you to take a note of the arrow in the middle of that formula. That shows the process. Everything on the left of that arrow are called reactants, the things that will react. And everything on the right of the arrow are the products, or the things that are created. So respiration has a fairly easy formula. Sugar and oxygen come into the process. They are the reactants. And then after respiration has occurred, carbon dioxide, water, and energy are produced. 
The fancy terms for these things are the chemical names that you'll see above. The ones that you're probably familiar with is O2 for oxygen, CO2 for carbon dioxide, H2O for water, and then there's ATP. So here's your key ideas. Cells need food for energy and growth. Cells create energy through respiration. Respiration happens in the mitochondria. And respiration converts energy in food into usable energy called ATP.